Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. The readings this week continue the theme of great change coming to a people struggling with faithfulness. Our first reading is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak compassionately to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her compulsory service has ended, that her penalty has been paid, that she has received from the Lord's hands a double for all her sins. A voice is crying out, clear the Lord's way in the desert, make a level highway in the wilderness for our God. Every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level and a rough terrain, a valley plain. The Lord's glory will appear and all humanity will see it together. The Lord's mouth has commanded it. A voice was saying, call out. And another said, what should I call out? All flesh is grass. All its loyalty is like the flowers of the field. The grass dries up and the flower withers when the Lord's breath blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass dries up, the flower withers, but our God's word will exist forever. Go up on a high mountain, messenger Zion. Raise your voice and shout, messenger Jerusalem. Raise it, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord God coming with strength with a triumphant arm, bringing his reward with him and his payment before him. Like a shepherd, God will tend the flock. He will gather lambs in his arms and lift them onto his lap. He will gently guide the nursing youth. God's coming challenge continuing. is continuing challenge is clear, but so is God's ten tenderness. Tenderness and care for really put people offering comfort, comfort. Isaiah. Isaiah gives voice to the emotional emotional up, ups and downs of a community under stress so we this people is only grass yet that some people is called out to the hard future oriented oriented work of preparing the way for the holy one right. our next reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. Don't let it escape your notice, dear friends, that with the Lord a single day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a single day. The Lord isn't slow to keep his promise, as some think of slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to change their hearts and lives. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, on that day, the heavens will pass away with a dreadful noise. The elements will be consumed by fire, and the earth and all the works done on it will be exposed. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be? You must live holy and godly lives, waiting for and hastening the coming day of God. Because of that day, the heavens will be destroyed by fire, and their elements will melt away in the flames. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found by him in peace, pure and faultless. Consider the patience of our Lord to be salvation. Oh, she did. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cameron. To Peter acknowledges the mystery of God's time. Karyos where one day may be a thousand years by human reckoning, and the community is called to live actively. Attentively. In this very mm -hmm. moment, listening for the call of God. This next reading is Mark 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I'm sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. 
voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. John was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and want God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to even bend over and loosen the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, for he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We are as we are where are we as a congregation? Wary, determined, listening, ready for a jolt of surprise and challenge. Do these readings offer hints, encouragement, or direction to our congregation as we face a future unlike anything we may have imagined before? This strange year. You can do it. Um, <laughs> I hate this light. I'm not wearing my clown. I want to do. Here, well, watch this. Now we're going to pick up the other one. one nope, thing. pick up the other one. And light it off now. I'm going to use the lighter. There you go. O Holy One, we light this second candle, a, candory off, a candle offering comfort to weary spirits after a year of pain and loss. Let its glow remind us of your tender care and warm our lives in the light of peace. Let it guide us to your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice and joy in the service of love. And we all say together... God be with us in this light of peace. If you are worshiping with your family or loved ones, pass the peace to each other. If you are worshiping alone, speak a prayer for peace into the universe. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. With you.